Hello and welcome to The Sherlock's Show. I'm Georgie Courage Cole and joining me on the sofa today are Lou Huff, Laura Black and Becky Hull. Welcome ladies. Later on in the show, Lou and I are going to be showing you the best of the high street. From stylish oversized blazers to great knitwear, we'll be here with a seriously good and other stories haul. Plus, I'll be joined by relationships and divorce coach Sarah Davison. She'll be giving us her advice on maintaining a healthy and happy relationship. But first, maybe it's sharing, maybe it's sharing beauty products. Maybe that's the secret to a healthy and happy relationship. <laughs> anyway, funnily enough, Victoria Beckerman is dropping lots of tidbits into the media about beauty uh, to coincide with her new beauty launch. Becky, I've got to ask you, you went to the launch. I did go to the launch. It was an amazing launch at Annabelle's. And it was beautiful. Do you love it? Is it a great product? Do you know what? I have to give her credit because it is an amazing. What she has created is all completely sustainable. It's all refillable. And I love the lid lusters. And the blonde one is beautiful. It gives you that sort of wet gloss that's really popular right now on the lids so yeah I have to hand it to her because what she has created is very chic and simplistic but she is dropping it in three segments and the oh, first is that one right? yeah so the first one's all about smoky eyes because that was sort of her signature <gasps> navy smoky eyes I mean that navy palette it's beautiful amazing I know and then I think next is lips coming at the end of the month okay well Watch she's very clever place. someone once said she does collaborations with other brands. She learns everything she can, and then she goes out and launches on her own. It's true. So. And meeting her, because she was at the event, she is very intertwined with the brand. Like She really does know beauty, so that is something I would put out there. Mm. She and really she's, she's launched it with a very, very smart lady, Sarah. She, who used to be Estee Lauder. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, so she's got a bit of a dream team, so yeah. it should be good. Yeah. Um, anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. <laughs> we're, actually, we were going to talk about the fact that apparently... David steals her beauty products, and I was interested to know. You're all, you're laughing. I don't know why. I'm dying to know. I know Laura's husband. I'm dying to know if he steals her beauty products. I don't know why that's so interesting. Do you know. think he should? I imagine he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, okay. I, if he does, it's out of pure laziness. Yes. Is it like he can't be bothered to reach his own? So, yeah, a couple of times. I've seen him go into my LMS pot, so I, I carefully put some okay. Nivea next to it so and that does he, he doesn't need to look. quite advanced skincare regime? Or? Absolutely not. No. <laughs> okay. no. Well, um, he will be when he starts reading SL Man, which exactly. is launching next week, and we're going to be telling men exactly what they need to be using. So, no, but he's got a few of his own products, has he? I mean, he's pretty basic. Some nice yeah. shaving stuff. Other than that, that that's about it. Does but he moisturise? After shaving, yeah, hence why I put something a bit cheaper next to <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Becky, what about your boyfriend? Harry doesn't, but I would say he's very interested because obviously I'm very lucky with the perks that I get sent things. And he's very much someone that likes to have a rifle just to read the names, see what they are. He has, a bit like you, it's out of sheer laziness if he uses like a shampoo or a moisturiser. And there's been times where he's picked up a Lalabo body wash and just put it all on. And I'm oh, like, oh, <laughs> washing excuse control. Excuse me. Yeah, so he's got well, no idea, but it would be if he was to use it, it would be from not being bothered himself. Oh my gosh, I'd be furious. <laughs> I was. <laughs> what uh, are you doing? Lou, what about you? Yeah. I'm intrigued in your answer yeah. too. Um, yeah, Lewis does use them sometimes. It'll often be like, I'll use my, um, I love the fresh soy cleanser, and I'll do it next thing, and he'll be like, Smells really nice. <laughs> <laughs> like, can I, can I just have a go? So then he'll, he'll then use it, and then I'm like, well, You definitely already know what this is like. So he likes to use that, and the, um, Exfoliation as well, but I think I could I could do some exfoliation. So we'll do the cleanse and polish together. Um, not they, together, but he'll <laughs> yeah he'll watch me do it and then be like, can I do one? Okay. Yeah. Um, and actually, he's been using my vitamin C moisturizer, which I talked about on the show before, for so long that it's run out. And I've been saying, buy me a new one if you're going to be using it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that's got to be in the just rules. Just bought two, one for him, one for himself now. So yeah, I feel like not the out expense the window. Yeah. I got given my Augustinus Badder, blow the doors, expensive, expensive. And my husband picked. I went, absolutely, <laughs> under no circumstances are you to use that. Anyway, so he's got something quite cheap that comes in the Accardo that he uses. For his moisturizer. <laughs> so he's definitely hoping that some SL Man yeah. beauty perks might come his way. But I think slowly but surely, he did ask me if he should go for pedicure the other day. I was like, yeah, maybe you should. Definitely. Um, anyway. Um, well, from men's beauty to semi-permanent beauty. I don't know how I'd feel about a man having semi-permanent beauty. Mm. I think that's a step too far, um, so far anyway. But we have a feature going on the site, I think it's tomorrow, we're ahead of, ahead of the curve, um, about semi-permanent makeup. 
Is it something anyone has done? Would you do... Do you have any experience, friends who've done it? What do you think, Becky? Let's start with you. I have a couple of people I know that have done it. And actually, one was has tried the semi-permanent liner, which is going live tomorrow. And she swears by it. She said mm. it's amazing. It only lasts... I say only, it lasts for two years. But I think that's her being safe in the knowledge that it's not completely permanent. And actually, what has come of that treatment specifically is they're very clear, the people that um, do the treatment, they say, you know, it is subtle it's more of a tweakment and don't yeah. focus on the word tattoo and because, when you saw her did you notice it yeah but very very subtly okay. and she said it's so nice you know being able to go for a run and not worry about putting anything on and would, would she just put eyeliner on all the time all it's the like time I think that's the thing maybe it's more for people that reach for the eyeliner every morning and are sort of mm. drawing yeah. it back and forth the fact that you're having is that not a needle? Yeah. That's a needle. Under your eye. Yeah. I mean, holy shit. That, sorry. Yeah, that it just, is. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And it's, it's a, t I mean, I agree. I couldn't do it myself. It's a teeny tiny needle when you can either have it done on the top lash line or the lower. Yeah. But yeah, painful. You have yes. a numbing cream first. I know someone with it on the bottom. It, it does look good. Does it? Oh, yeah. No. yeah. It's do you know process. anyone who's got it? Don't know anyone. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm not sure. No. I'm, I changed my mind too quickly, yeah. so I'm worried that it's there for two yeah. years and... I don't yeah. want it one day. My stepmom has her brows done, mm. but she's very dark, and I think that's the key. And she, uh, she joked once that she looks like Cleopatra for a, for a sort of few <laughs> weeks afterwards because they're so dark. She's got a fringe, so she can sort of hide it. Yeah. yeah. So they're quite full on. And actually, I've got a girlfriend who has it done as well. Again, she's darker. It is amazing. Yeah. I mean, not to have to. I mean, I do my every day my yeah. brows, my yeah. brows, my brows. Um, not yeah. to that would be nice. My mum's mm. just had her eyebrows done and she's very, very fair and kind of didn't really have much of an eyebrow. So she's now had it done. She just says she just feels so much more confident. Mm. It's really shaped her face. Up and just feel like she can just go out without mm. any makeup on and just feel like... Yeah. How does she feel though when it's first done? Because it is so dark. I think that's what terrifies me. So hers really wasn't that dark. Okay. Um, it's, but you obviously you go and you have it tweaked. So she went then, I think a couple of weeks after she's had it. She maybe had it done three yes, times. Do it quite gradually if okay. you can. Yeah. Just do, and it well. it's very much like okay, we need a little bit more in this area or more there to balance it. So I think you can tweak it to make it right mm, for okay. you. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think she's loved. loved well, that sounds a bit more appealing. Yeah. And actually, great tip. You know, as you get older and you have, you know, your eyelashes go and things. Mm. Actually, you need. And I religiously dye my eyebrows. I bang on about it because when you're fair, you really need something. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Completely um, agree. Anyway. I think. And actually, the two people I know that have had it done are a little bit older. So there's definitely something yeah. in that and darker just got to be brave just I'm, be I'm brave. hoping there's a lot of numbing cream that's going on <laughs> and anyway, I'm definitely aiming to it right last um, thing we're going to talk about today is one product that we're loving basically the segment that we do on the show things we love is my favourite it always seems to be scheduled for a day when I'm not in the show <laughs> and I always feel like I'm missing out so today as we've had lots of beauty chat I asked you all to bring in one thing you're loving right now Becky. Shall I go first? Start us off. So, what have you got? This isn't brand new, but it is Clinique's Even Better Makeup SPF 15 foundation. And I am someone that religiously goes for sheer luminous formulas. And this is actually quite, it's heavier, it's more matte, but it's still got a kind of demi glow, is what I like to call it. Which the is demi just glow. Re just can you, really can you chuck it? Can you chuck me what, with the lid on? Yeah. Have a look. I feel like we've given it quite oh, a Oh, the worst <laughs> chuck ever. Oh no. It's gone right. Behind. I'm going to get it. <laughs> It's <laughs> my mother will be really upset that I dropped that actually says you're sporty. She, yeah, she you're out of the netball things. team. I'm out. To be honest, that wasn't the best throw okay. from my part. Right. But it's very, um, it's got quite a velvety texture and they've sort of reformulated it and it's available in 56 shades, which I know. Oh, it's nice. It's, it's really so nice, isn't nice. it? And it's such good coverage. And I'm not usually into that, yeah. but honestly, I've had so many compliments. But you don't look like, no, Every no. day that yeah. come in the last week, I've been like, Becky, you yes. yes. yeah. you It really has hurt me compliments. Yeah, I think they're going to oh, have I a bulk order. It. I know. It's I gorgeous, absolutely it? love it. It's light, it's thin, and it's glowy. But mm. still good coverage. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah, it's really every, like and it's a really good price, isn't it? It's a really good price, yeah. Real. What would we do without you, Becky? Okay, <laughs> Laura, what have you got? So once I've put Becky's foundation on, this is my new favourite oh, yeah, thing. You, you use this as that No, one? but I'm desperate to because okay. every day I'm like, I want <laughs> yeah. your skin. Um, this is the Milk Makeup and it's the Glow Oil Lip and Cheek. And it's just really sheer. It's a bit of colour, but it's really dewy. 
I like that you can build it. I don't, I don't wear really, really heavy makeup. So I like, and it, I'll put it on my lips. I'll put it on my cheeks. I put a little bit on my eyes. Sometimes if I'm looking really tired, just to make them look a bit more glossy. They're very blendable. I'm a big fan. Me. And it's so What's small. Right, I'm going to catch this one. Can you oh, give me a good oh, throw? I'm going to pass it. <laughs> it's re they're really punchy really colours, nice. but don't be alarmed. Because and it's I'm, all vegan. All vegan. Oh, and they're so nice. They really sort of go to oh, a... Oh, it's nice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's quite corally. Yeah. yeah. But equally not yes. too dark that you're scared to But you to can build it. it up, can't so you? So you just exactly. do a dab a dab. Yeah. And then a little bit on the lips. And really glossy. They feel really glossy on the skin. And then oh, they're gorgeous. also really, a really good price point. Very good price. I think they're about... Is it £12? £12? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I wanted to say. And really? they last you forever. I know they're tiny, but you, you don't need loads. You just oh, scribble right. it on like a crayon. <laughs> but it's Love not that. as long as that, which I always think it's also so cute. Yeah. yeah. Love that. Okay, Lou, what have you got? Mine is the La Roche Posse. Posse? Posse. 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 It's hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. How do, you say, how do you say couscous? Couscous. Yeah. I mean, she's, Cooper, got, she's got a problem with pronouncing. Julie Cooper uh, says couscous. So, um, okay, well, it's their Pure Vitamin C10 What's it called? Serum. What's it called, Lou? I'm not going to say it. Wrong. It's already gone out of my head. Um, and I am La Roche Posse. La Roche Posse. Okay, La Roche Posse. Um, and I am just obsessed with anything that promises glow, hydration, anti-aging, just give it to me and I'll lap it, I'll lap it up. Um, and it comes in this really Ooh, yeah, cool pipette. Oh, love a pipette. And the formula, it's quite, it's almost like it's a bit like a gel. Um, and then you just kind of smooth it in. It's just always Ooh, quite fun. very silky mm. and it just instantly gives my skin that At night time, do you do that? Um, in the morning and at oh, night. Okay. Morning normally, actually. Actually, no, I think I don't have That's very glowy too. Um, mm, and it just feel like, feel how smooth smell yeah. People do really great this. that smells good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, skin cuticles, vitamin C, I mean, yeah. that one below Amazing. 100 and whatever pounds that is. This yeah. is what? It's 38. 38. Um, That's good. Okay. Boots look fantastic. You can get it online. Um, and yeah, it is a little bit more expensive. You only need a tiny bit, and I just think it gives you that hit, and kind of you, it feels really nourishing. Mm. And now you're going to show. Like, <laughs> now, and it. I'm just going to show because before we went live, there was, I'm going to get in trouble for running out, out of time. But I mean, it, there was a lot of love for Lou's pink eye. I love that. Yeah, so I had to bring it in, and I brought it in in my lovely Celine handbag, which I was very careful not to be leaking anything <laughs> in. So I had to put it in a little bag, and Laura and I were sharing some love I've over the I've got a like lot of love bag. for these. Perfect size. I think they're cute. It's it's plastic okay. consumption, but they're really good because they're strong, so you can reuse them. <laughs> yeah. Sustainable tick. Yeah. yeah. Big right, fun. okay. I'm getting way down. We've been going over time. Anyway, I think they're great. They're so good. Can you order them online? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, mine... Last but not least, I mean, I bang on about Sesh Feet, as you all know. Thank you to a reader who, who alerted me to the fact that there is now Sesh Feet gel effect top coat, Ooh. which makes them even more shiny. I get, let's see, I get <laughs> asked about my nails a lot. I'm a bit nail, nail obsessive. I can't ever not have my nails done. And you can do, with Sesh Feet, you can do your nails 10, 30 at night, go to bed, they don't grease. It dries so quickly. But this is this... This one, I don't know how new it is, but someone told me about it. And it, it's just a regular top coat, but it gives more of a gel effect. Oh, nice. It's even Ooh. more shiny, and it dries. See, you're going to be, you're going to be on this. <laughs> That's quite exciting, me. This is, this will change your life. It is the brand, isn't it, mm. for top coats? And, I mean, when I go lasting. and have my nails done, I, A, I take my own. And when they don't have such feet, I'm like, why do you not have such feet? <laughs> yeah. Who are you? You do not know your stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. That was great. That is definitely all we've got time for, but don't go away. After the break, Lou and I will be showing you some of the best things available at And Other Stories right now.
few brands that get the balance of style and quality right quite like and other stories, whether it's directional dresses, structured blazers, or pretty blouses. It's the brand that Instagram girls and, well, us lot in the Sheer Lights office love, so we thought we'd bring you some of our favourite pieces. God, I'm, I'm sounding like I've got a lot of love for and other stories <laughs> yeah. today. We do, um, we do. We, but we do, we do. So, Lou, Okay, let's start, kick, start with some off. blazers. First one is this oatmeal. Um, wool blazer, a little bit thicker. It's kind of, I guess, a hybrid between a bit of a coat and a blazer. It's very oversized. It's got a real boxy shape to it. And this was, was also available in black. It was everywhere last winter and they brought it back, which is always good. It's quite coaty. Polly was on the show the other day and I thought she looked like she was on her way out. I was like, she's supposed to be wearing a coat. Um, it's quite thick, isn't it? It's, it's really thick. It is, it's but it's quite really nice for this time of year, I think, when you're, a blazer's not quite enough, yes. yeah. but yes. you don't quite want the coat. It's warmer, isn't And it? also camels everywhere, but camel, I can't wear camel, it just doesn't suit my skin tone, so I think this is a, is a much better version. You see, oatmeal. I can't wear oatmeal. It's mm. not good. I look dead well, in that. One each. Anyway, it's lovely, it's lovely. Um, Next one, one is this double-breasted um, version, which I have got my eye on. It's much, much thinner, um, so definitely something you can wear kind of day-to-day -day around the office. And I just think, again, it's that oversized shape, which is definitely something to look for at the moment in your blazers. Really cool. Love that. Love that. Love, love it. that. And I can see you in that, Becky. Mm. Mm. I love all the buttons as well. It's like a bit nice. Such a nice structure. Yeah, very nice. Very masculine. Then, okay. um, next we've got a black crop version, which reminds mm. me actually of the, the Cream Zara one that we were both wearing the mm. other day. Um, it it's almost got that tuxedo vibe to it, but I think it being cropped is just a little bit different. I like that about it. It's really nice. And I think with a high waist to trousers yes. cropped is really nice yeah. it's just a bit too much around the bum otherwise exactly. I think yeah. that's a really good length yeah and nice with the dress as well yeah. like for event dressing I think cropped is exactly it's really nice yeah that's very very useful next we have got some leather trousers I mean we're waxing lyrical about leather straight leg trousers at the moment but these are a bit cooler because they've got the um exposed seams which mm. I haven't seen much of and I think again looks quite Ganny-esque what price are these? I know it's on the screen. These are um, 239 okay. um, So again, you know, leather is an investment, but if you're looking for something a little bit more trend-led or a bit more interesting, mm. exposed seams. And I think that, that seam with a cream knit is so nice. Yeah. It just pulls it all together mm, really so nice. much. I have got the H&M ones that yeah. we did that I don't know if they're back in stock yet. I mean, yeah. I, the number of compliments I've yeah. had on those. So if you like the look of these, yeah. you're not going to be 200 or so, or so pounds no. for real leather. They're really nice, aren't, aren't they? they? And they've got that seam around the knee, which I always really love as nice. well. They're more, they're more sort of genie though, aren't they? Yeah. In their shape. Oh, actually, and a little suede panel down the side. Mm. Can you see that? It's really nice. Cool, cool details. Very nice. And that is the trouser to get your hands on yeah, this season. Definitely. You have been told. Definitely. Um, next on to some shirts and blouses. We've got this. It's kind of like a boyfriend overshirt. Almost looks a little bit like a night shirt. Lou? <laughs> we call the Lou, I think. <laughs> but I just think that is it's so it's so cool. You. It's it's very me as well. I love it so much. Um, it really easy to wear. Love it's quite with, long, Lou. How it's would very you wear long. that? Um, and you can see it's kind of very got long. that. Um, um, graduated detail around the back as well. I think really cool with leather skinnies. Mm. I know we're talking about straights, but really nice. Really nice with a chunky, chunky, chunky cream cardigan, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Like that. And I think with one of those I find blazers. Shirts, yeah, I find, yes, with a blazer. Yeah. Otherwise, it's shirt, I just get too cold in the winter and yeah. too many shirts. I love that. Uh, but it's nice. Um, next, we've got a bit of cord. We've seen so much cord coming out, I think, in like August, everyone's the end of the summer. Um, and nice for it to be in a slightly more feminine cut. It's got this puff sleeve, which I think is really pretty. Mm. Um, and again, with these shirts, they're almost a bit like an overshirt, so you can wear it over a t shirt as well, almost like a little bit of a jacket over a dress. It's cool. It's quite smart as well. Yeah. yeah. I have to say, I am not a cord on top kind of gal. Mm -hmm. And. If you're gonna if you're gonna do it, I think this is as good as it's gonna yeah. get. That without that shoulder, I would yeah. be giving this a big thumbs. A feminine down. Tweak. But I think that don't you think that? Kind yeah, of, kind I was also saying as you said though, it's a bit thicker. So if you yeah. for a shirt, if you're cold in a shirt, yes. maybe for this time yes. of year, it's quite nice. That. Jeanette Manson, who I'm obsessed nice with at the moment, mm. yeah. she was wearing this with some like tucked into some cream 
um, jeans and she just looked amazing. Yeah, she looks amazing. I mean she does, doesn't she? But I'm not, <laughs> quite scanty. No, I'm, 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 I'm reserving judgment on okay, the, okay. the cord top half, but I do think that's as good as it's going to get. Okay, something a little bit more feminine then. Um, <gasps> yeah. Beautiful lemon ruffle <laughs> I silk this and blouse. I didn't, and I really regret it. I was like, I've got so many of those sorts of things, but it is so pretty. Oh, and look at the sleeve detail. Look at those mm. arms. Can mm. you see on there? So so pretty. Um, I mean, I just think you can never really have enough blouses like this in your wardrobe when you just don't know what to wear in the morning and you just want to throw something on and know it's going to look great. And at night, I also love that at night, unbuttoned with a bit of yeah. a peekaboo bra. I, I think something feminine like this yeah. can actually look really sexy at night. Oh, if definitely. If you do it the right thing. I love that. Yeah, I should have really. it. Yes, you should have. I know. There's still time. I know. Um, I did buy this. Did you? Yes. Oh. Um, bit of colour, pussy bow blouses again everywhere at the moment, but this, the best thing is the colour on this. It's oh, so vibrant. This colour is just... Amazing. If it looks so, so nice. It's gray. gray. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. And I love it. I haven't worn it yet. It's still in the bag. Oh, now's the time. And they did the denim, didn't they? Yes. Which I loved. But, oh, and it's, it's not the too best much color. as well. It's kind of a little, a little touch to it. And again, you could have that. Um, unbuttoned and just hanging down if you kind of didn't want to go too, yes. too prim and pretty yes. but I think it's cool it's very cool it's very yeah. cool um, next something a bit cosier hoodies wow. again we've talked about styling up hoodies and how you can make them a little bit smarter and I think this is perfect if you want to wear if you're not into the sweatshirt style or you feel like that's a bit too casual for, um, for work or for you know everyday wear then I think this is great sorry I you know I love a I love a label. I like to see what something's made of. This was in my basket the other day. Was it? It is so, uh, that is literally me. The in dream to travel in. We oh, always get oh. asked what to travel in, what yeah. to wear to the airport. It's a light layer as well. It's not too thick and chunky. And really and nice grey. Yes. Really, really nice, nice. Gray. And not, not lots of polyester, which is nice. 32% 32, 32 alpaca. 32% wool. Oh, yeah, so nice. that gets my seal of approval. And That's big really nice. Sleeve. So, again, it's easy to layer. You're not going to be, if you've got a big shirt on, ruffling things around. And um, so much smarter than a sweatshirt material. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, really nice. Great. Um, then we've got this cropped big puff sleeve cardigan, um, which I th also think is great, making kind of a bit more of a statement out of your knitwear. Yeah, very you, quite Chanel. Yeah. I, I'm not wild. I'm not, it's not my favourite. It's not no. my favourite. I like the sleeves. Yeah. Um, I like the Chanel vibes. Yeah. And the shape. I don't know. I don't know. I think that's cool. I can see pearl, you look nice. Pearl you look nice in that. Um, which I think is nice. Let's finish on some dresses. This is very similar to the rotate dress. Oh. Um, black wrap dress, very simple, but cool puff sleeves. I think this is just amazing. You can't go wrong with this in your wardrobe, I think, if you're not sure what to wear. This is amazing. These sleeves, yeah, there is this rotate dress yeah. that I do have. Polly has the yellow. Yeah. Um, the sleeves are just, you've got to try this one on, yeah. but this is a really, no, really, not really much hanger dress. appeal, but great impact. <laughs> it's a great dress and really reasonable. Yeah. Love it. Um, next, we've got this one, which again, it's just all about the silhouette, and I feel like the, the cutaway will show the, the shape of this a bit more. But I love this kind of oversized boxy sleeve detail. I think it's really modern. Cinch in the waist, add a belt. I think that would look really cool. Great with like a biker over the top. It's a nice shape. Yeah. I just don't know if I can get past a polka dot dress without thinking of the Zara dress anymore. That's <laughs> but it's trouble. not quite a polka dot. I mean, it is, but it's more like... I don't know. Splodges. Yes, it's not as uniform. As <laughs> it's good autumnal colours too, yeah. isn't nice it? Nice with a chunky, you know, if you're going to do that lace up biker yeah. Yeah. chunky boot, I think that's that's quite cool. Yes. With a red lip. Yes. It's or cool. just cool knee high boots, I think. It, again, that. asymmetric yeah. um, line at the bottom. Yeah, that nice. is Heather. And then the real party piece. Um, yeah. So gold, lame, again, it's the same shape as the black one, um, but if you're into something a little bit more interesting colour-wise, then this is for you. Gorgeous. Yeah, party Love season it. is about to start, so I know, don't, I know. Wait, don't wait to buy it before your party, buy something now, Amazing. I think. Amazing, amazing. Fab, thank you. Love most of that. Um, as usual, everything will be linked in the show notes below. Now, whether you've just embarked on a new relationship or you've been married for 20 years, relationships are work in progress. And after the break, I'm going to be hearing all the advice you need from a leading expert, so don't go away. Good morning, Georgie Courage Call. How are you? I felt more awake, can I? What time is it? 5.52. And what are we doing today? We're going to Kempton Antiques Market. It is a dismal day. We did choose to come. We knew this was a forecast. Oh my gosh, we're going to cover. Head for that green one. I mean, this is some serious, right? 
Volvo rang. Got a guy in a yeah. van up there. <laughs> yeah. Is there any way you could bring it for me? Yeah. Oh, careful. Look over that. Serious, serious. Careful with your table, Laura. Right. Thank you so much for bringing that. That's sure. really fine. Thank you. Yeah, no Thanks, man. What are we going to do now? We're going to go and film an unboxing. For Westfield. Where are we going? The Hoxton Hotel. In South Bank, there is a new Hoxton in London. It literally opened in the last few weeks. It's obviously a super classic shape, but I think it being in the houndstooth just gives it a little bit more interest. I mean, head to toe, Reese. Love this so much. I'm 28 and I love this, but my mum is nearly 60 <laughs> yeah. and would rock this. Look at the boots! The boots seriously make it. You've got so much oh stuff. God, I know. It's bigger than you. You're gonna be like, Do you want me to carry that? I'll carry the suitcase. One item, autumn, winter. What is it? Leather trousers. What about outfit is this? Outfit number three. What do you like yeah. about this outfit? I'm a real sucker for brown and kind of leaf. I guess yeah. it's leaf yeah. colours um, come autumn. Conquer brown. I love conquer brown in autumn. It's the final outfit. And really. what are you wearing today? An end of stories, all oversized blazer. It's an amazing staple piece. A Marks and Spencer's cashmere cable knit it's jumper. A Marks and Spencer's slip that. skirt. And Zara. Now we all know relationships aren't always easy and sometimes we need a little helping hand. That's where relationship expert Sarah Davison comes in. She's a two-time best-selling author, a divorce coach, and she is the woman with all the tips and tricks on how to maintain marital bliss. Well, it's not necessarily marital, but you know, it sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, welcome. Thank, thank you so you much for having for me. Thank Congratulations. You. Two times best-selling author. I know. Thank you. Impressive yeah. stuff. Um, right. You've put together 10 tips for yes, us I have, yeah. to live by, to swear by, to stick on the fridge. Um, <laughs> so first up, number one, tip number one um, is to be thoughtful and to do something every day to let your partner know you love them. Yes. So. so I think that a lot of people that I see coming into my clinic are struggling with relationships because they've stopped working at them. I think people think once, they've, once they're into a serious relationship or they've walked down the aisle, got the ring on the finger, I'm done, I can relax mm -hmm. and let lots of things slip. And the, the key to having a successful relationship is just to keep working at yeah. it. So little acts of kindness are, are really important just to surprise your partner every day, which is... It's something thoughtful. It doesn't have to be big, yeah. but just something that shows them that you've thought about them. Yeah, or a phone call. My husband's quite good at just ringing and just saying something nice. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a big gesture, yeah, does yeah. it? It's no, just it like doesn't. No, no. A little thing. Like sometimes the smallest gestures have the biggest impact. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Mm. I kept you I kept you my red jelly baby because oh, I know yes. that you love them. Exactly. Um, okay, <laughs> the second one was to keep the romance alive. I'm a big believer in this. Tell yes. us more. Well, I think you can fall into a rut of the, the daily routine, you know, especially if you've got kids, maybe you've got demanding jobs, you don't spend that much time together. So it's important to create that quality time where you mm. can have fun together and do the things together that got you together in the first place, mm. you know, not just forget that and yeah. get distracted. Yeah, so that's what, date night. And it day doesn't nights. have to be a night out though, does it? You know, it could be a cosy night in on the sofa, watching you know, your favorite film or just something which connects you without mobile phones, without yeah. kids, but just for you. Just having, just having you time. Yeah. So important, especially when you just had a baby, we always say, oh, yes. God, so important, you know, just to, just to be you again. Yes, because you lose your identity, mm. become parents, um, and, and you forget that you're actually, you know, individuals. Mm. So connecting on that level is really important. Mm. Um, I love this point. Point number three is to be each other's cheerleader and biggest fan. So important. I think this is one of the most important things, just to have each other's back and to be there, you know, championing them everything they do. So, you know, if they've done something good or they're going to do something maybe they're nervous of, just giving them that confidence boost that you believe in them mm. um, and showing them that you're there for them no matter what. Mm. I think it's really important. I think sometimes you think, oh, they know that I love them or they know that I'm proud yeah. of them and so it doesn't really matter. But when they do stop and say, I'm really, you're like, whoa, that really means yeah. something, doesn't it? It's yeah. so easy. Yet, we don't do it. To, if you assume that someone just knows how you feel, mm. then that is the death of relationships. Mm. We need to be constantly reminding, reminding our partner, you know, this is who I am, this is why I love you, this is what you've yeah. done. You know, those communication strategies are really important. Yeah. And we do it with our children and those relationships, <laughs> yes. so we should be doing it. Yeah, yeah, so agree. Uh, number four, communicate well. We, mm. I recently did a sex podcast with um, Lucy Beresford, who oh, is wow, yes. yeah, the amazing Lucy Beresford. Yes. And you know, the main point in that was communication, communication, communication. Yes. It's just so important. But 
I, you know, as Brits as well, I think we're rubbish. We are. We are very rubbish at it. And I think it's not just about how you communicate. It's also how do you do things like resolve conflict? Mm. Because you'll have, both have different strategies on how to resolve conflict. For example, one of you might grow up, I've got a client at the moment who grew up in a, in a Greek family background. So they stay in the room and they shout it out and you don't leave until it's resolved. Now that doesn't mean anything awful. And there's, you know, it's, it's just the, the way of doing it. Let's get this done yes, and move but, on. But my client married a very quiet woman who always left the room, let things calm down. That's her parents' way of dealing with yeah. it. And then they come back later, maybe even the next day, yeah. which is absolutely the worst thing for her husband because he doesn't go to sleep on an argument. Yeah. So the two of them are, are both doing what they think is the best, most loving, respectful thing to resolve that conflict. And yet they're both feeling unloved mm. and as if the other person doesn't like them very much mm. and is being unkind. So it's important to have those conversations, I think, and communicate about this is how it makes me yes. feel. Is this your intention? And sometimes, just sometimes, I will just say, I'm going to get over it, but right now I can't. Like, you know, I'm not a grudge holder, but I just sometimes I just need a bit of time to pass yes, before I can enough. calm and you know. Um, so is it okay not to go to, not to say sorry before you go to bed? People always say, never go to bed on an argument. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I just sometimes I'm yeah. not ready to let it go. Absolutely. And some, some issues are bigger than others. Maybe you can't fix it overnight. So, yeah. you know, you've got to do what feels right for you. Yeah. But anyway, communicate, communicate. It's e easier said than done. <laughs> um, I always say, even if you write an email saying we need to talk about something, at least then it's out in the yes. open. Um, trust your partner, number five. Yes, I think trust is really the foundation for any successful relationship. And the reason people end up coming to see me is usually because the trust has gone or is going. Mm. Um, and, it, and I'm not saying you can't get it back because I've seen relationships that can build that back, um, but it's tough. Mm. So actually making sure that you, you're open with each other and that good communication will lead to that trust. Yeah. But it is the foundation to, to a yeah. successful relationship. Yeah. And in a similar note, you then say, point six, don't let problems fester yes this is what i call stacking so mm. at the beginning it might just be they leave their trousers on the floor or they, they they do some things which maybe irritate you slightly maybe when they're eating or something you don't say anything but then you know things there you might have a few other things and that just stacks up and then becomes thing, a... yes become like you know suddenly the volcano will erupt and it'll be a, maybe a small thing that's happened but it's the straw that's broken the camel's back yeah so just address those issues before they get out of control because that building um resentment is very difficult to reverse when it gets yes. to a certain point but you can't expect them to change everything they do for you you know you've Absolutely got to accept not. people yeah. do things differently and people have flaws and yes. but you're saying just communicate yeah. and I think talk about it. it's not about nagging or becoming a pain because you're constantly repeating something, but you've got to learn to love them for some of the negative things yeah. as well as the positive things. So yeah. that's the acceptance of your partner, yeah. which again is another really important point. Yeah. And another good point, I like all your points. Another point is to make an effort to look good around your partner. Mm. Um, you know, this is something again we talked about with Lucy about not letting yourself go, yes. not just for yourself, but for your relationship. Yeah. And I think this is super important because again, we settle and we think, okay, well, I'll be all right in my comfies and I won't bother making much of an effort. But, you know, I'm not saying you have to do it all of the time. You know, Sunday mornings, you might want to veg out in your pajamas or whatever. But you know, there have to be times where you do make an effort yeah. because they want to feel special too. So best yeah. foot forward. Yeah, and the physical relationship and the sexual Absolutely. attraction yeah. is, is a huge part, isn't it? It's not yeah. everything, but it's, it's... It's a massive part of it, it's yeah. It's a massive part. Um, point eight was to do things together. Yes. So especially if you've got kids, um, more than one kid, usually one goes at the weekend to do maybe the football and the other mm. one goes to another mm. sporting event or something else. So you don't end up doing things together even on your weekends. And mm. I think it's important to make the effort to find something you can all do together mm. with the kids or without, but actually spending that time together, even if it's right, well, let's, I don't know, clean the kitchen together. It's, it's just staying together and not having that distance yeah. won't make a big, a big difference. My husband and I used to always say that we loved pottering around. That what we used to potter. <laughs> that, was our, yeah. that was the verb to potter before we had children. Yes. And we always say now, like, the biggest treat ever is to do it during the day. Like, you know, you can get a babysitter when the yeah. children are in bed and spend time together. But there's something about doing something together in the day yeah. that just feels like such a treat yeah, and so romantic in, yeah, another, yeah. Yeah, in another way. Um, number nine was to keep the intimacy alive. Yes. And again, you know, it is quite normal after a long period of time for this to sort of 
wane a bit and the intimacy to go. But I think you have to work at it before it gets to that point because quite often when it gets to the point where neither of you are having any intimacy with each other, then that is difficult to reverse. So actually just making the effort. And again, mm. when you're having that quality time together, it's scheduling it in and making sure that, you know, making it fun, mm. but just, you know, relighting that spark and keep that going. Mm. Mm. Absolutely. And your final point was to be playful. Absolutely. I think you've got to have fun together, yeah. you know, even if that's just a bit of friendly banter or surprises, but, you know, making sure that there's fun because yeah. sometimes, I mean, we all need a bit of fun, don't we? We do. And we forget so often when we've got working hard and the kids are demanding yeah. and there's shopping to be done and chores to be done. Yeah. But, you know, just prioritising every week to have a bit of fun. Yeah. You know, just it, consciously being aware of and that. And even if it means you schedule it, then, you know, it's better that than you don't. Yeah. And, I mean, they, they're brilliant points. And, God, I hope... I hope people listening kind of can look at those 10 and go, well, I'm not doing them all tomorrow, but just start to sort of yeah. think about how they might bring them into their day-to-day -day a bit more. If it's all going wrong, though, all is not lost. You can be happily divorced. You can move on. You Absolutely. can separate. You know, your advice would be, if, if this still doesn't work, cut your losses, yes. move on. And well, I think we all deserve to be happy and you only live once. And I would always recommend working hard before you make that decision to leave. But there yeah. is life after divorce. You know, I have a lot of clients who've gone on to be even happier than they were yes. if the relationship wasn't healthy. Yes. So you've got to make the right decision for yes, you. Yes, absolutely. Well, I'm a product of divorced parents and uh -huh. explaining it to my young children. And I just said, you know, sometimes, you know, Two people are not meant to be, and they decide that they can be happier elsewhere. And exactly, if that's if that's how it is, then that's then how that's it is. Life. Yeah, and yeah. being a good role model for your kids also means they're not staying in a toxic relationship yes. where they're learning that marriage equals something that isn't quite healthy. Yes. So again, you've got to think about it from the children's perspective too. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. What great advice. What, oh, you, you know, all so straightforward and timely. We've just got to make the time for it. Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us today. And thank you to the Share Lunch ladies too. We'll be back next week with more fashion, beauty and food. Until then, please don't forget to thumbs up, comment, subscribe and tell your friends. Bye-bye.